Welcome to Wednesday's Word. We are now into the second devotion during our Lenten season. Started with Ash Wednesday last week and we talked about um, God's choosing a man like David and he made the lineup, but he was not even there at first when Samuel came to anoint one of the sons of Jesse. He was out in the field. But I wanna track a little farther into David's story today. I use something to inspire the thought. It's like our devotional for this, this season is Amazing Grace, Devotions for Lent. And it's gonna take a look at that hymn. And I want you to, if you got one, open it. It's been very good. There's also the story of Amazing Grace and it's powerful. But this little bookmark was what gave me the topic for today. It has um, uh, Bible readings for every day of Lent. And so, this one is grace for the little guy. And at my size, you might think, oh, Pastor, you're not very little. But oftentimes I feel like a little guy. Uh, the Bible reading is from 1 Samuel 17, and I'm gonna start at verse 45. And again, it's about David. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And those who gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. And I'm gonna have you read there on the rest of the story from 1 Samuel 17. And you might say, well, pastor, I've known that since I was a kid, but I want you to read it again. Read it with fresh eyes and let it speak to your heart. Because as you read it, you'll see that there is a boldness, there is a confidence. David's theology is correct. It isn't by sword and javelin. It isn't by might that this nine foot giant is able to take out this little shepherd boy who can't even wear the king's armor. It doesn't fit. He has five smooth stones. And some people say, why five stones? Did he think he was gonna miss four times? Some people speculate that it was a stone for Goliath and then one for his brothers or his sons that he would only need five because there was five total. But that's speculation. What the Bible says is that it only took one. And David stood over the giant and drew his sword and cut off the head. And at that, the Philistines, they ran for their lives. Their courage was lost. Their champion was down. What David had proclaimed was true. The battle was the Lord's. And then all the children of Israel who've been standing there quaking in their sandals run with a shout. They chase them all the way to the Philistine encampments, to these, to these cities of Gath and Escalon. And David goes and they get the spoils and David takes the Philistine's armor and puts them in his tent. And then Saul asks the question, well, Abner, you're the general. Who is this guy, this guy named David? And he said, I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. And David rises from a shepherd boy to a soldier, a soldier for the Lord. God has many things in store for David's life, but it's all about grace. Grace for the little guy who faces a battle in the name of the Lord, who walks in the strength of the Lord, who after he was anointed was filled with the spirit of the Lord to trust in the Lord for all things. And friends in Christ, we need him to do that in your life and in my life, to open the word, to build us up in faith, to guide us in his way and when we would stumble and when we would falter, 
to redirect our path and work repentance in our lives and joy, joy that comes in the morning. I hope you enjoy this Lenten journey together as we look at amazing grace that is ours because the true champion is Jesus and it goes all the way to the cross for you and me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your grace for the little guy. Lord, that you chose one like David, not because he was impressive in size or in stature or strength, but he was yours. He was an instrument of grace because you would grace his life to protect and to lead and to inspire by the words you gave him to share and to sing. And our lives are still stirred by your word that you brought about by your spirit and your servant, David. So stir our hearts today to faith and to faithfulness and to trust you that no matter how small we may feel from day to day, that you're there for us and your grace is amazing and free. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful week.